maybe you're wondering why is Teppo limping? Well, um, I guess it's story time. Yesterday I was going out to meet my cousin and I thought I'll just take the one wheel to go meet him and I was one wheeling down the road doing the crosswalk and once the crosswalk ends there's a little ramp up to the curb and I didn't have too much speed so I thought okay I'll just kind of you know lean forwards a little bit get some speed to pop up over that ramp. Didn't have enough speed and what happened was as I noticed I didn't have speed I tried to jump off the one wheel again I didn't get two feet off the one wheel, I only had one foot off the one wheel, and the one foot that stayed on the one wheel was the one on the front, which means that my foot was still activating the pad on the one wheel, and the one wheel flew forwards while my other leg is back here, meaning I did the splits. And I'm pretty sure after some internet research, self-diagnosing, I think I either pulled or tore my hamstring and it feels painful. I mean, yesterday when I fell, I heard some sort of like pop or felt like a pop. So I really felt like my hamstring muscles were just getting stretched. Ah, it bugs me so much because there are those moments in life where it's just like split second decision and you regret it so much because I could have just gone around, you know, on the road a little bit and avoided that little curve. But I thought, oh, it's gonna pop up up there. But nope, again, I injured myself. If you guys didn't know, I'm very accident prone. I've broken my femur. I've ripped my patella tendon off my kneecap and usually not even doing anything really extreme, but I'm just accident prone. So wish me luck. Hopefully I get better soon and I'll be back on my feet because I was really getting to the groove with riding my bike every day to work here and back and in the evening doing workouts. So I'm a little bummed that now I have to take it easier for a few weeks. Anyways, enough about my whimpering and crying about my pain and my injuries. I will survive, I'll get through this. But today, I do wanna talk about this little guy, the Sony ZV-1. Specifically, six months later, what are my thoughts about this camera? Am I still using it? Why or why not? So, let's go talk about it. So, back in December 2021, I got the Sony ZV-1. And the thinking behind purchasing this camera was is that I wanted to get a fun, smaller camera that would be maybe just more enjoyable to take along with me to document my journey as a YouTube content creator and to make vlogs with. And really it has everything I needed. It has the flip out LCD screen. Um, it's got reliable autofocus, 4K 24 frames per second. And with the Lanzi wide angle, it was wide enough for me to do vlogging. So I was really enjoying the Sony ZV-1. It was pretty much my main camera for the first few months of this year on my YouTube channel until I got the Sony a7S III, which I'm using right now to film with. The moment I got the Sony a7S III, I noticed that the ZV-1 was starting to just sit on the shelf. And there was a few reasons for that. I think the first reason was the fact that because I do have a filmmaker background, of course I want my footage to look as good as possible and I felt silly to keep filming my videos with this instead of the a7S III when I know that I can get amazing 4K 24 frames per second, 4K 120 frames per second with a full frame sensor on the a7S III which I can't get with the ZV-1. And even though I know that story always trumps the quality of the footage, there's still part of me that's like, well, I still want to look as good as possible. So I felt like it would be silly for me to film with the ZV-1 just so that I can carry around a lighter camera when it's a little bit of extra work, but I'm gonna get that much better quality with the Sony a7S III. Second reason was that I really want that wide dynamic feel when I'm creating my videos for the YouTube channel. And even though the Lanzi wide angle lens definitely helped with the fact that this is not a full frame camera and it wasn't as wide as what I was used to, still with the Sony a7S III being full frame then with the 1635 lens, it's just so wide that it's really hard to compete with that. And the last reason was stabilization. Uh, with the Sony ZV-1, if you want the footage to be more stable, then you gotta put on the active stabilization, which crops in 
which then in return, it's not as wide as I would hope and it's not as steady as it would be, for example, on the Sony a7S III with its IBIS and stabilization. So at the end of the day, I felt like if I've invested all this money into the Sony a7S III, into the 6035, of course, I gotta make use of that camera setup and I really do like the Sony a7S III and the 1635. Of course, there's times where if I'm traveling or I'm somewhere and maybe I'm feeling a bit lazy, I don't wanna carry the whole a7S III 16 to 35 road video mic pro with the gorilla pod setup versus the sony zv1 with the little manfrotto pixel clip and you know the rode micro microphone so there's those times where i'm like i wish i had the smaller setup but at the same time i feel like i'm willing to pay the price for the better quality better audio stabilization the more dynamic width to the footage so yeah, the truth is that I haven't been using the ZV-1 as my main camera for the past few months. Instead, I've been using the Sony a7S III. Would I recommend this camera for people who are starting out on YouTube or wanna start vlogging? Heck yes, this is a very build, affordable setup, 750 US dollars, and I think the Ulanzi wide angle lens was like 50 bucks, so it's not a lot of money for a really great all-in-one compact setup with the flip LCD screen, 4K 24 frames per second, it's got stabilization, it's got good autofocus, so it's still definitely a great setup. And I actually have found a second use for the ZV-1. So it's not just 100% sitting on my shelf, I've actually been using it for a top-down shot on these uh, talking headshots. I have a little arm there where I can hang the ZV-1 and just hang it just a little bit above the camera and that way I'm able to get a top down shot. And as well, I've really been thinking about doing live streams or even Zoom calls, meetings with the ZV-1 as a live stream camera. I've heard people saying that you can do that with the ZV-1, I haven't looked into yet. If you do know how to use the ZV-1 as a live stream camera, please comment below, I'd love to hear that. But it'd be really fun to up my meeting game. We all know how much the world changed when COVID happened. All of a sudden there's so many remote meetings and all these kind of things. I think it'd be fun to just like have a really sick setup with a little bit more depth of field and more sharpness to the live stream or Zoom calls rather than just using the MacBook Pro webcam, which is not that great. So yeah, I just wanted to be honest about my journey with the Sony ZV-1 and why I'm not using it as my main camera anymore. I know a lot of you guys were commenting on the videos like, is this video filmed the Sony ZV-1? And I didn't want you guys to feel like I was filming with a camera that I'm not using every day. So yeah, honest moments with me, journey six months later with the Sony ZV-1. And yeah, some stories of my hamstring being pulled. Please give me some prayers so that I uh, heal up quickly because uh, I want to be on the move again.